presenter Noel Edmonds, who during his very long career has experienced online abuse, death threats even, um, and an intruder in his home. Uh, Noel, something um, that you're going through right now as well. I mean, we've talked, we go come back to things that have happened in the past, mm. but you say as soon as you saw Alex's case in the newspaper, yeah, you saw, tweeted her, didn't you? Yeah, I, I did. I, d I don't know her personally, um, but I admire her as a fellow professional, mm. and it had a resonance where I thought, yeah, I want to publicly say I understand and I support her. Mm. I think it's very important also to understand this is not just about people in the public eye. No. There are a lot of people, there'll be a lot of people watching now who go, yes, I am receiving this form mm. of abuse uh, at work, etc., etc. And clearly, we've all got to decide whether we're going to do something about it. I mean, thank you for this invitation to come on because I'm not here saying, oh, poor me, I'm here because I'd really like us to think about where the responsibility for a solution actually lies. Uh, explain a little bit, Noel, about what you're going through and what you've been through, because over the years, it's, it's been sort of a, a, a sort of a catalog. Yeah, of well, yeah. back in the 70s, it was sort of, well, it's the price of fame, you know, it's fans and whatever. In fact, I was here a couple of years ago, and I, there was a woman outside, and I remembered her from when she terrorised me back in the 70s. As a, I mean, she, she damaged my car, she turned up at my home when she was a young girl and whatever. And she had a rather odd way about her. Um, I've subsequently had uh, a guy who set up a website to kill me and uh, I had the option of bringing the police into this and I went down a slightly different route. It was well publicised a couple of years ago that I met him and it was very interesting because he went to pieces completely. He agreed to meet you. I was going to yes. say, was it hard to get him to agree to meet you? I'm sorry. Well, he had a very simple decision. Either I went to the police, and the police advice was this was a criminal situation. He would have got a criminal record. Yeah. Uh, or meet me, and I want to understand why you want to kill me. And, of course, the fact of the matter was he was a young man in his 20s. His sister did most of the talking. He broke down completely in this office in Bristol. And um, it was apparent that it had started as something light-hearted, but then it became quite malicious. And then, of course, he didn't realise what he had started. You know, uh, what I want to... Did you want him to know how upset you were? Well, it was how wonderful, because Liz, who was here, you. actually took control of the meeting. And right at the beginning, you'll like this bit as a woman, she looked him in the eye and said, why do you want to kill my husband? And he went to pieces completely, because there was no answer. No. He didn't want to kill me. Now, not everyone, and I wouldn't suggest that Alex should have gone down that route, but not everyone wants to confront these people. Or can. Or can. But that's an interesting point. When are we, as a society, going to strip away the anonymity that these people have? You know, we must encourage more accountability. We must encourage people to think before they press send on an email, post on a tweet. Why are they allowed to be anonymous? And I think there are three outcomes of it being more transparent. Yeah, everyone says go to the police, but we know the police are struggling with this. If you couldn't hide behind the anonymity, we are going to end up with one of three outcomes. We will find out if someone is mentally ill mm -hmm. and then they need professional help. We will find out whether or not it is a police matter and then the police can take over. Or we will find out that actually this is something where friends and family should say, why did you do that? Why did you send that? Terrible, terrible. Make people realise what we've done. got to. We, you know, society is made up of individuals. We've got to decide whether this is the way we want to live, mm. ruining people's lives, or whether actually we are all going to do something. What about what's happening right now? So you say there is somebody right now. Oh, it kicked off again a few weeks ago. Doing what? Uh, she sends me emails uh, of uh, an intimate nature and then it became quite serious when she was accusing me of having an affair with her and she wanted to go to the media and the public and, and out our relationship. And you say she, you're not, you sound as if you're not sure. Uh, well, my professional advisers say they believe it's probably male. Uh, it, it's really interesting, this area, and I know we haven't got time, but please look at the work of a neuroscientist, David Eagleman. There's a series on BBC Four at the moment, and he has researched how the brain works. We're familiar with brainwashing, 
You know, it's been used by politicians and regimes for years. But what he's discovered is that the brain almost cleans itself and produces a new picture. So it doesn't Different... necessarily acknowledge that they've, they've said what they've said. So you start off problems. saying, I love this person, and you can actually make a transition to, I'm married to this person, or I don't like this person, I feel violence towards them, and it can transition to extreme violence. And in the experiments, even the people doing the experiments went through the process and created a totally false impression of the truth. Yeah. And that's what happens with a lot of these people. I mean, you showed Alex Jones. You didn't show the picture of the, the man that no. was given the restraining order. Look at the picture of him. He needs Alex, help. Alex he Jones genuinely and... needs help. Yeah. Look, he has a haunted face. A lot of these people are in a mental health area where they need professional the help.